Welcome back to PSS, everybody. In previous videos, I showed you how to get a pretty decent metal tone on both an 8-string guitar as well as a bass guitar using free VST plugins. And thank you for all of the support and nice comments on those videos, by the way. Um, today's video is a bit of a follow-up to that. We're going to show you how to get the drum sound that was featured on those tracks using Beatcraft. Uh, now, Beatcraft isn't like your standard VST easy drummer or whatever you have where you plug in a MIDI, uh, you know, some type of MIDI track and it plays along to that. This is a standalone program where you program drums in a similar manner except that you're clicking instead of using, um, you know, a MIDI controller or, God forbid, trying to do that with a, <laughs> with a mouse with a MIDI program. Um, it does cost money, about 60 bucks if I remember correctly, although I'm very well aware that people pirate the living hell out of it. So, I advise buying it if you're going to go this route. Um, either way, whether you own this program or a different program, you can go about getting the same sound that I do using the sample packs that will uh, be available to download below. Now, this method does have its limitations. Unlike a MIDI track that you would put inside of your DAW, you you know you can't really edit in real time with this thing. Um, you get it in one pass, you export it, and then you import it into your song, and it's pretty much the way it is, unless you make changes and re-import it again. So, I wouldn't recommend this method for any huge productions or anything that you're really serious about, but I use this for quick demos, for stuff that isn't too complex, uh, because it, I am faster this way. If you're more experienced with MIDI um, production and are more comfortable doing it that way, but like the samples, feel free. Um, but for a lot of people that are just beginning their own productions and are you know just now getting the hang of VSTs for guitar and all these other things, then you know MIDI stuff can kind of be a little intimidating for some people. I know it was for me at first, so uh, I think this is a really good method for beginners. And that's why I chose it to pair with the um, other free VSTs. We'll look at MIDI later, um, but for now I think this is some good, you know, warm-up ground. So, let's jump into Beatcraft. Alright, so we're back here in Cubase with the same old unoriginal 8-string riff thing uh, that's been featured in the last couple of videos for demonstrative purposes, of course. So this is what we are wanting um, in the end. Or more specifically, that. In this video. So as you can see, it's an actual wave file. If you do this as a MIDI track, you'll add a, a actual MIDI track, which is, you know, keys and different uh, notes that you can play on a MIDI controller or do it manually, which really, really sucks. Um, whereas this is, you know, pre-recorded as if you were recording uh, live drums. So that's what we're going to go with. That's our end goal. So we're going to switch over, switch over here to Beatcraft. This is what the project looks like. Um, and as you can see, all it is is different patterns that you create and has every instrument. And you can break up all the measures and beats into different sections. And you just click what instrument you want to be played. You can customize the kit with built-in sound samples as well as samples that you bring into the software. So I'm going to attempt to uh, recreate this as close as possible with um, a new project. That way I can walk you guys through it and uh, see if we can't get this sound. So going over here, we'll hit new project. This is probably what it will open up to uh, when you do this. So we'll call it Beatcraft Tutorial. And let's match the tempo, 160. I usually leave these the same. Um, unless I'm writing a really funky song, but generally I always have something 4-4 four, four underneath and I can always change up here, uh, for any off measures. Now this one, I've saved some kits for different stuff. We're going to start with just the rock and blues kit. Um, this is kind of your basic rock and roll type thing. Um, so we'll open that up and this is the menu it's going to bring you to. So you see your pattern editor up here and your sequencer down here. Uh, right now, we'll just focus on making a simple pattern. So here are the default rock and blues kit samples. So you got a kick drum, snare, hi-hat, closed hi-hat, two crashes, a ride, don't want to do that, um, high tom, mid tom, floor tom. So all together, you know, they don't really sound that great on their own, but we'll be able to edit that as we go. So 
making a um, beat in this is quite simple if you know basic music. So this is one measure um, in each beat, and you can decide you know how the notes are, are divided up. So let's make just some eighth notes on the kick drum. And we'll do snare every other one, and I'll take away that kick. And as you can hear, there's some reverb because there's some built-in effects, and um, we'll we'll modify those as we go. Uh, let's say open hi hat. Let's do that. So that'll be our power hand quarter notes there. Pretty simple. Now. I always think in Beatcraft, the cymbals are too loud compared to the kick and snare drum, so you can either crank those or turn down the cymbals. Uh, generally, it's the power hand that's too loud for me, so that's better to me. Now, um, what I like to do is measure by measure, if unless it's like a super complicated song and it's easier for me to just um, do you know, every other measure or combine two or three of them so we're going to copy this pattern here now what that allows me to do is I can start sequencing different patterns and although these are the same now we can change that so let's um, let's you know you can name it let's let's call this verse and we can call this verse crash and let's say I want to open up this one with our two crash symbols. Okay, cool. So we'll do a verse crash there, a verse there, and that's all you have to do is drag and drop. So we'll play hit here, and this will play from the beginning. It will loop in the sequencer if that's all you have. Um, now a cool thing you can do, copy, paste, just with control C, control V, and say this repeats a few times. So what you got to do, click, shift, click, control C, control V. Now you have two verse phrases. And you can drag these flags to stop it and start at different points if you're at a higher point in the song. So that'll keep going. Pretty, pretty easy, self-explanatory stuff. So let's do a fill. Um, last two beats of the measure, something like that. Um, we'll do something super unoriginal, like two high toms, two mid toms, two floor toms, that. And when you're riding drums, try to make sure, especially you know if you're just now getting into this, that the drummer can actually play this in real life. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not having them hit cymbals and shit at the same time as I'm making them do the fill. So there we go. So that sounds... Sounds all right. So let's replace that verse. You can just delete that. We'll name that verse fill. And we'll drag that there. Cool, cool. So that's the basic premise of this software. Um, you can get as technical with the rhythms as you want. I've written plenty of crazy rhythms and polyrhythms and time signatures ranging from 5-4 to, oh man, what was the crazy one I wrote? Um, it's like a 13-8, I believe, or an 18-8. Um, all you have to do is go up here to the time signatures and you can change it on each pattern, which is really nice, as well as steps per beat. If you have too much space that you're not using or you want to subdivide notes further uh, for this, like I said, 4-4 four, four will work. Um, if you want triplets, you can... Use these, and that will place triplets instead of the, there we go, we'll do that, um, the regular notes that you had before, so that, see how that changes, yeah, that's absolutely terrible, <laughs> uh, but, you know, you get the idea of, of what it can do if you're writing in uh, a triplet pattern, yeah, that's absolutely horrendous, but um, that's how you do it, so, this tool, I feel like, helps with writing drums early on. It certainly um, helped me visualize it a little easier when I was first getting started. Um, I could always hear what I wanted in my head, but being able to see it you know, lined out like that 
and listening back to my guitar and thinking, okay, where does the bass drum go here? Where does the snare go there? It makes it a bit more intuitive and you'll get better as you practice it. So, um, of course, what sounds good and and what doesn't will just take practice. So that's using the basic rock and blues kit. And if you're happy with the sound, all you have to do is export it. Um, obviously save your project every now and then. I'm not going to because I don't care. Um, you render the sequence that you make down here. So we have eight measures. You'll render that. You do as wave. It'll do it in a fairly high quality. And you just export it to wherever you want. And you'll go to your DAW and whichever track. So you select your track, file, import, audio file, wherever you exported that. And you have exactly what you just wrote in Beatcraft in here. So that's the simplest way. If you just want to get some beats down and just some percussion and rhythm to play along to, as you can see, it did not take long at all. However, if you want to start, you know, making things sound a bit more usable, then this is where some of the tricks come in. So the first thing we can do is right click on either of the instruments and you go down here to effects. Now this has a uh, pre-EQ on it already with the Acoustica EQ. So what I'm going to go to do is go to Metal Kick, which is a EQ that I saved. Um, this is something I like. It's a pretty decent sound, and it you know kind of cleans up the rumble on the kick drum in the bass uh, kick that they include in the software. And uh, let's hear the difference. Let's go to different first. So that's without it. So yeah, it gets that k -k -k, um, a little bit more tap sound to it, um, almost like Lars Oryx set in um, in Justice for All. It's kind of what I was going for um, as far as kick drum sound goes. Still doesn't sound amazing, but we'll get back to that. The snare as well. I don't like reverb in individual uh, instruments. I like to do that all at once. So we'll go to metal snare drum. Basic um, idea here, it, I have a kind of a weird curve going on, but it's to nuke the lower frequencies, get rid of a little bit of the boominess, and raise the mid frequencies. So this is what it sounds like with it and without. Without. Uh, a bit more of a thwack to it, and um, just, just cleans up some of the frequencies in a metal mix to my ears. That's the ones that I mainly change with effects. Um, I don't know that many of these... Okay, so yeah, these are all EQ. They all have reverb and stuff. So you can go through, edit all these as you wish. I wouldn't spend a terrible amount of time with it, though, because of the next trick I'm about to show you. Um, okay, I think we have a clean slate on everything else. So let's say that you have this, and they're just not floating your boat, right? I mean, maybe you can make a decent hard rock sound out of this, but just for the technical music that you're writing, it's not, not doing it for you. So you can go down here to the kit and sample library, and they have a bunch of other stuff that is just pretty much unusable for metal. Um, you know, they've got just this awful 80s sounding dance and hip hop kit <laughs> that's straight out of a, a Rick Astley music video. So I wouldn't recommend those, but the best thing to do is go over here to Explorer. And if you download the samples that I have uploaded, then you'll grab those. They're called Beatcraft New Library. Um, so select that folder wherever you end up putting that. And as you see, we have a myriad of other samples to play with. Now, all of these I have completely unorganized because I just snagged them from a million different free websites. Um, so we have everything to play with from basically everything you see up here and more. Um, China symbol, got some snares there, different snares, a glass is a different one, some hi-hats, splash, and as you can tell, these sound a bit more realistic than what we had um, just in the in Beatcraft itself. A lot of these I don't like, a lot of these I do, like these Inferno kicks are some of the most raw sounding kicks I've ever heard. I really like them. Um, now for the music I write, I like that sound a lot. Maybe for whatever you do, it's going to be a little different. So as you can see, all you have to do, drag, drop it to where you want it, and it automatically replaces that instrument sound. Very cool. Um, we got a million different kicks. Maybe you like this one better. 
I still prefer Inferno myself. Um, of course, I have EQ on it. You take that off. Leave it off. Whatever you want. Um, and you can just keep going down and replacing these instruments. To add an instrument, pretty much the same deal. You drag and drop one. Uh, moving the tracks up and down is a pain in the ass. As far as I know, there's no other way to do it than right click. Um, but that's how you do it. So go back to our fill and let's let's replace all the toms just for fun. Delete that one. Um, so we have tens. I'm assuming that's supposed to mean 10 inch toms. And we'll move to a 12. As you can see, the farther we move down, the higher the velocity and intensity of the hit goes. Um, so we'll choose one of the higher ones and down to a 16 for a floor. I want a fairly hard hit there. And we'll try that. That sounds a bit more realistic to me. And if you haven't figured out, these samples are, you know, legitimate recordings of real instruments that someone has done. You know, they've mic'd up a drum kit and have done how many ever different hits there. So L1, six times how many, you know, six times five, eight looks like. Um, so they have all these different zones they've hit at different intensities. And one of the disadvantages of Beatcraft over if you were doing this in MIDI is you can't control the velocity or intensity of each of the hits. So you have two settings, basically. And all it really does, um, at least for the built-in instrument samples is control the volume it i mean it maybe it sounds a bit more powerful but like let's take that and i can barely tell the difference anyway um between the double click so in a midi controller environment like with easy drummer you'd be able to set different velocities like okay so i want this snare roll but i want the velocity of the hits to increase as the snare roll Goes on, goes on. It makes it sound more natural because otherwise you have this robotic and da, 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 that's perfect. Um, this is exact same sample every time, and it's obviously sounds unnatural. Um, you can't really get by that with this program unless you make a million different tracks with all of the separate um, samples. To my knowledge, so that is definitely one of the limitations, and. It's just something that you have to take with this program because, like I said before, this isn't really the be-all, end-all kit uh, solution. It's not the quickest way. Obviously, for beginners, I think it is a lot better to do this route because you get to see where all your hits are. Um, it's a little bit easier dragging and, dr dragging and dropping. And you still get a really respectable drum kit sound. I mean, like I said, I've, I've used a couple renditions of this to create some of my music and it's not horrible um just don't be in a hurry is the main thing i mean if i heard that my first guess definitely wouldn't be this came from beatcraft um so let me load up the project that is featured in cubase here and now nah, we won't save that one so this is the kit I have, and I stole this from another song that I was working on, so that's why there's so many just odd symbols and, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Um, the effects I have, I do have that one EQ'd. I definitely have the snare EQ. I'm not a fan, at least for the type of music I write, of most of these snares. I'm sure if I worked on them a little bit, Maybe a few, a few passive few few passes of EQ. Jesus Christ, couldn't get that out. <laughs> um, then maybe I'd be able to make them fit a bit more. But they just don't have the thwack and almost marching band sound that I like in a snare. So I just prefer to use this one and EQ it. Fits okay. Uh, it's not the highest quality sounding thing, but it does work. So same principle though. You make these different. Uh, phrases so i do eight beats per measure here really probably should do two measures but just the way it worked out and you have this line of patterns 
that makes your drums. So once you're done, you know, you'll have this long thing if you're doing one song continuously. Um, go to File, Render Sequence, you'll render it. Once again, you'll go here to your DAW, import it, audio file, or whatever the equivalent is on yours, and you'll drag it there. Um, now in Cubase, I have it to where it will snap, so I could put it in the perfect position immediately, um, playing to the click track, and there it is. Now, what I like to do from there to make it a bit more high quality, mask some of the imperfections, is add an envelope shaper, a little bit of reverb, and a very simple EQ curve. So let's deactivate all that and listen to it without. So that's what we're starting with. That's the raw file from Beatcraft. Now what the envelope shaper does is kind of change the waveform just a bit. Um, I like a little bit of a sharp, uh, longer attack, um, making the length a little bit shorter. That way it kind of tricks the snare and kick to being a little bit more intense um, and a shorter release. It almost, I don't like to compress these drums very much, but it almost kind of acts as a compressor in, in one way. Um, it's, it's kind of a subtle difference. And once again, the way I'm recording this is going to murder the sound quality. So I'm not sure you'll be able to hear it all that much anyway, but I'll give it a try. So here's off. Here's on. I think the kicks sound quite a bit more intense. The um, power hand kind of drops off faster. Uh, I do like that compressed hi-hat sound that is, you know, really loud on the front end and then kind of uh, drains off a little bit on the tail end. Uh, like a little bit of reverb, not too much. So these are my reverb settings. You can do about anything you want. Cubase has a tight drums preset that I think I modified a little bit. Don't need a whole lot in the mix because it gets really boomy otherwise. And you see what happens if you turn it up too high or around there. Just gives it a little bit of air, makes it sound a little bit more natural. And for the EQ, really depends on the song. Um, I felt like this one needed a little bit of bump around the snare and cymbals range. This is definitely within the snare's frequency. And a little bit of bump on the low end uh, just to give it you know, a little bit more bottom end to match the bass. And that's about it. So that's your final project. Product, not project. So yeah, that's about it. Um, for any of you viewers out there that have been watching and are using something like Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer, you can absolutely do the exact same thing except with your MIDI file. So to my knowledge, you can just take those samples that I put with all of these. And if you like one of them, you could just drag and drop into whatever kit you're making if your software allows uh, you to do that, which most of them nowadays do. So um, you can make the same thing and... You can change the velocity sounds because there's like, uh, I don't even know, at least four different, you know, we got different sounds there, different intensities that are soft, medium, hard, crack, um, and of course based on the location and intensity of that hit, you can make a really dynamic sounding drum set out of your um MIDI program. Of course, for this, this is quite functional for demos and getting to learn drums because, I mean, I imagine most guitarists out there that are interested in stuff like freeware and making a decent sound out of free software are not going to be experienced with writing different instruments all that much. So I think this is a really good learning point. And, you know, all this stuff you see here was created with either effects that are included in the in Cubase itself or freeware and you'd get it to sound like this of course it's not um triple a album quality to me but there are some really talented producers out there that can make it sound 
pretty close to it. Um, so it's a great starting point, I think. And like I said, I still use this method for just quick stuff. If it's, you know, it, you can see how quick you can rip out a, uh, a decent rhythm and export it and you're done. Especially if you, you know, only edit it a couple times, it saves time to me, um, you know, compared to the other types of drum software out there. So, yeah, I hope this was helpful. You can absolutely apply this to about anything else that accepts samples, but I feel the Beatcraft is a good starting point. And if you don't like it, if you, um, you know, I believe there's a trial version or at least a trial period, you can always go to something else. Um, or maybe you're just lucky and know a drummer. I, I know a drummer, but we're never actually able to um, hook up and you know record stuff because <laughs> we're always busy. So uh, this is about the only way I can effectively write and record music is through drum software. I imagine most, most musicians and guitarists are in that situation, so you'll have to do something if you plan on writing songs. But um, it's my two cents. Hope this was helpful to some people. And uh, we'll see you down the line with more freeware and VST videos as I get to them. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.